a viewer submission to attempt to cobble together some Esper auras. They, uh, traditionally speaking, this archetype has been either blue-white or black-white in Historic, although I do think there is some merit to trying to kind of mash those shells up together like we're doing here. Most notably, proactive disruption like Thoughtseize tends to be very strong in these aggressively slanted shells, and if you're in blue, this deck gets to play four Staggering Insight, which helps offset not only the life loss from Thoughtseize, but also one of the drawbacks to being a three-color deck is the fact that you take a little bit more damage from your mana base with all of these shock lands, and the lifelink from Staggering Insight helps offset that as well. Kaya's Ghost Form is also an incredibly powerful effect, especially alongside Luris for keeping our really obnoxious threats alive so they can hang out and draw lots of cards. Speaking of obnoxious threats, being in blue also also gives us access to Storm Chaser Drake here, which is effectively another one of this kind of play and aura draw a card style of effect. So let's go ahead and pop on into some historic matches with this and see how auras feels today. Yeah, looking at other Auras deck lists, they don't really seem to be playing Lantern Tumos. I would assume this archetype has an okay Phoenix matchup just because you make like a giant lifelinking idiot. So I, I imagine you probably just try and race there rather than trying to like slow down and interact with them would be my assumption. But I haven't I haven't played the matchup. Like I haven't played a ton of Auras, so I don't have experience in how it actually plays out other than a little game theory. All of our colors, we got two threats, we've got two auras. Sign me up. Wait, am I playing unranked? Did I queue unranked by mistake? I think we queued unranked by mistake. Yeah, it looks like it. There's no ranked icons here, right? Okay, so we're playing a real deck. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just jam it. They have like a fatal push here, we could be in trouble. They have to like push one, Arcanus push the other. Pyromancer is great for us, obviously. All right, and then I think we just diversify our threats here, right? Well, do we, or do I just like go all in on this one? If I cast these, we draw four cards, then I'll hit them and draw another and lifelink for a bunch. Yeah, I lied. Let's just go on this one. <laughs> And that's, that's why, that, that happens in ranked on occasion, but it happens a lot less frequently in ranked, so. Although I must say, it feels kind of odd to play the red-black mid-range deck and then concede a match to Auras, because, like, the red-black mid-range deck, like, has a pretty good Auras matchup. I think it's actually one of the reasons to play that archetype.
Yeah, maybe they're just looking to bully people not playing real decks. That could be it too. You could have could have also had something come up IRL. Hard to know. At any rate, we clicked we clicked to do a ranked match this time. Shadow Rail, thank you for the over four years. Welcome back, appreciate it. Looking to shred our ledgers, shit. I'm just gonna storm chaser drink here, I think. Oh, this says SNC chat is, uh, is what's it called? Is the, uh, whatever the thing is, uh, historic this weekend. Is it this weekend? I don't, I don't follow cop manuals. There's a set championship sometime soon, right? You can tell our opponents a professional magic player chat. They, uh, they had two Phoenixes and 13 cards. Oh, the real sign. Secrets. God, this card triggering when I cast two spells as well is so good. And that's cricked. Um. is such a tilting card for just everyone involved. If we hit and all that glitters, we might not be dead here because Storm Chaser does have lifelink currently. So we'll take uh, we'll take a couple of draws here. We've got we've got some outs at the moment. land means we're probably dead especially says because i can't get this big enough to attack into ledger shredder with the swamp this is definitely a matchup where our thought seasons are not particularly good for the reason you saw that game which is like they just they have so many card draw spells yeah ledger ledger shredder is a large land shit does does not mess around Definitely want these portable holes. I don't think I want beat flap I think I want to try and stay relatively linear.
fortunately going to uh go into go into five here. That being said, this deck does mulligan, okay? I think I, think I wanna keep the double creature here against the Phoenix deck. According to untapped.gg, is it Phoenix is the most played deck in historic right now and it has a 65% win rate. That's absurd. I have never seen a number that high above 60 on their site. I train every day. No one meditate and prepare 60 65 is correct chat in in half really we really needed a third land last turn so we could have can trip this right away my body is ready for my three fives to die to unholy heat keep an open mind is more likely um i don't actually think that's true right i'm gonna i'm gonna click into the phoenix deck on untapped right now but i'm pretty i'm pretty sure oh they actually don't have decklist posted here huh let me look auras phoenix i don't i don't think lightning axe is that common in yeah yeah, it doesn't. Light, Lightning Axe doesn't really see play in Historic because you get to play in Holy Heat. Right, I wanted to look at Decklist before I checked it, but yeah, Lightning Lightning Axe only sees play in Phoenix in other formats because they don't have Unholy Heat. Because before Unholy Heat, red players had to actually pay a real cost in order to kill high toughness things. With, but with Unholy Heat, you just get to do it trivially. Easy mulligan here with no threat. Going to five. Again, I think I err on the side of keeping two threats. That 65% win rate does fa it does not t does not remove mirror matches. Which is, which is incredible. So yeah, yeah, for people that aren't familiar with statistics, not pulling out mirror matches means that the win rate is actually pulled down from where it should be because mirror matches pull a win rate towards 50%. Yeah, uh, un untap does not remove mirrors, um, melee does. So an important distinction there between the uh, two data types. Our opponent has gained a little bit of life. Just a, just a touch. Thought Seize is great here, obviously. Try and clear the way before they gain some more life. 
great last spell to take away from them. That's the part where they ate. They draw another collective company. Don't do it to me. Go ahead and diversify my threats here, I think. that scary they only have one unknown card we knew, we knew they had nothing this could very easily just be another land like they already they already played a company chip thought about printer twin i'm gonna be honest i remember hearing that described somewhere but I don't, I don't know exactly what it means main deck as percentile is an odd choice for the opponent's deck uh not if oh this is cute okay it's not really an odd choice if you expect a lot of control and this format, this format's very control and Phoenix heavy. Oh gosh, we're gonna lose. They drew a second collective company chat. Woof. Woof. I regret not drawing more cards yet. We really we really need to draw an aura now. Alright, nailed it. Never didn't have it. I guess. Thank you for the 42 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. I mean, I'm definitely attacking with this, right? Could be Resplendent Angel, could also be Skyclave. Definitely regretting not having any of the unblockable aura in our deck at the moment. We're, we're probably dead at this point, huh?
Yeah, yeah, they basically have infinite tokens. I don't I don't have any I don't have any unblockable or trample mana close, right? Yeah, we're on we're on our keen flight. We're we're just realistically going to deck ourselves before we can kill them. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Okay, a couple of fateful absence, some hush bringers. I think Thoughtseize is notably not very good here. I guess Arcane Flight seems kind of medium. Flying doesn't really help us much here, right? It's just like a plus one, plus one aura. Oh, I should trim some of our, I should trim some of the good boys because they don't really have destroy removal. Portable Hole looks okay. Portable Hole is not good in this matchup. I get that, like, they had three Bishop of the Wings in that specific game. But that's literally their only target for a Portable Hole that we care about. All of their important things cost three. And they're not, they're not going to have all of those Bishops every single game. Yeah, yeah the Lin Vala sack with the three Bishops was a clutch line. They were very dead otherwise. I don't... I didn't have anything that could allow me to play around that, but... Definitely strong sequencing from them. Huh. You know, with them missing a land tier, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this slow and pay for these Esper Sentinels. I was, I was just going to let them draw a card and jam the Spirit Dancer, but if they don't have a land, I'm not feeding it to them. Do I staggering insight and offer the trade or do I all that glitters and ship for five? I want to just ship for five. They're going to go land uh, sky cleave apparition and we'll concede the game, but... This is definitely one of the reasons why I don't tend to play decks like Auras when I'm picking decks that I'm playing. This archetype has a very low amount of what I would refer to as player agency, which means uh, your deck, uh, all, all of your, your, the most important decisions you make with a deck like Auras are how you mulligan and how you sideboard. No, it's not, it's not about it's not about being a glass cannon. Player low player agency does not mean you're a glass cannon. It just means the odds of your in-game decisions impacting the outcome of the match are low. Decks decks with low player agency really lean into lean into making good mulligan choices and making good sideboarding choices. And obviously, even if you do those well, there's no guarantee that you're not you're not going to you're going to win or you're going to lose. But that's where the most of the decision making is. The way the way your deck plays out inside of the game tends to be very scripted. This is this is the thing that you do. You once you once you keep your starting hand, like your lines are are largely decided and trivial to make. Yeah, everything, everything we've been playing is donation decks, Drunk All. I've got five or six left in the queue still. Running, running the every plate promo and getting a huge influx of deck submissions definitely was a good reminder of why uh, deck decks submissions are not cheap anymore. Because <laughs> I, do, I don't mind doing viewer decks on occasion, but doing them all the time and the types of things people tend to send in is... Uh, Definitely a good, uh, well. This 
has to be illegal, right? Like they're 77% and they're playing like a stock good deck. This is supposed to be the meme bracket. Even the 77 percenters in Historic are playing good decks these days, Chip. Okay, maybe they're not Phoenix, actually. Maybe I take it back. Or Dreadheart Arcanus probably means not Phoenix. Sufa. kind of dead chip feeling feeling kind of dead oh they're grixis grixis explains everything yeah i think everything is clear now they're grixis Uh, flashback Inquisition here. Take Carlaris away. Portable hole sounds nice. I guess I want discard spells to poke at their poke at their counter spells. It's Vanguard good in their removal. Yeah, maybe. That's tough though. I want to make sure we have enough enchantments post bar. I don't really know what I want to cut. Like all that glitters, we probably don't hit critical mass very often against an interaction heavy deck. Yeah, I, I won't take Vajrak turns for Historic. Vajrak, Vajrak turns is not, not playable in Historic. Unholy Heat, just like the deck is just mono three and four mana cards that died on Holy Heat. I'm gonna YOLO this. Let's just draw a second land, huh? Uh, if you wanted to cut in line in front of the other decks that have already been donated for, you gotta double them up. So $100 donation. But to get it, get it played later this week. I think I think I'll finish the deck queue tomorrow. So if you wanted it up Friday, it would just be the normal donation price. So the 68 months, Maddie. Welcome back. Good morning. Hey, I know you, you said you're off today, Maddie. If you're around this afternoon, I'll take a, I'll take a duo slash trio partner. Drop. 
let's just protect the spirit dancer here. Of course, I want to draw a card, Magic Arena. What kind of stupid question is that? Do I want to draw a card? This might be a little greedy. Maybe I'm supposed to play this out. What? Draws two cards and lifelinks me this turn. Even if, even if they, like, peel the removal spell here. And that one, that one does not kill this. I'm actually kind of surprised they chose to draw this. I would have revealed this to the Delvers and then cast Consider to get rid of this to try and find a uh, Fatal Push or whatever they have to get rid of Core Spirit Dancer when it's large. Sounds good, man. I'm going to be doing magic for another, uh, like, two and a half, three hours. So, you got plenty of time. The other thing about Auras is look look at those first two games we just played in this match. They were they were th this deck is really good for farming dailies and it's powerful. So like if you want to just run people down, like this archetype's good for running people down. It doesn't play super engaging or long interesting games. Even with the ghost form draw, I'd rather have blue mana here with the double staggering insight. I'll lead on Saram. This gives us our best chance to draw a uh, another land next turn. Ledger Shredder seems fantastic in general. It seems really good in our deck. We're definitely double spelling every turn. Or almost every turn. If we have if we have lands, we're double spelling. This, this is so much selection. It just seems like such a solid addition to this format. Like, these, these blue-red decks really were struggling in... In historic, so it's nice that they got a powerful upgrade. Sideboarding Shredder against Phoenix. Yeah, it's cute. I don't know. I think I think this just isn't really a sideboard card twisted. I think if you're going to play Ledger Shredder, you probably just want to play in your main deck. Which, honestly, there could probably be a strong argument, argument that Shredder's just like a must-play card in decks that have blue mana at this point. I could, I could definitely see that. Am I willing to trade Saram? 
Am I willing to trade Selfless Savior for Ledger Shredder? And six life. I think so, because I still have a Kaya's ghost form on this. They don't they don't have what's it called for an holy heat? They could they could triple block this and kill it. But that or they could triple block this to force the savior. And they're just taking that. So I get to lifelink here and draw cards. Yeah, this attack is great. I think I think that block that deck change is good for us, so we definitely offer it. No untapped red here is great for us. Alright, chat and see every time that really Grixis's true superpower is if you're having a bad day and you feel like, man, I thought my deck is good, but I just can't get a win. Grix just shows up and is like, you sure can get a win, Jeff. I'm here. I'm here for you, Jeff. Grix is, Grix is here. Seems good so far. We're gonna play it some more tomorrow. It's gonna get it's gonna get a second session. I think I mulligan this. Not only does it not have any auras to pair with these creatures, but it doesn't have a second white source, which means uh down the line our mana's gonna be awkward most likely. Now like this, I think I'm actually going to keep despite not having an aura because we have two threats and we have all our colors of mana. And going to five is not great. And our deck, our deck has a lot of auras in it. So our odds, our odds of drawing an aura with this hand is good. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I would, I would not keep this hand that I kept at seven, but at six, I'm not going to five, especially on the draw, right? Like our odds of finding an aura are pretty decent. I got excited. I thought the thing was going to connect here for a second. Kind of, kind of desperately needed another card here, chat. We don't, we don't have a whole lot going on. A very real downside to playing a uh, three color deck like we are instead of a just two color auras deck, blue, white, or white, black, is we don't get to play utility lands. So when we flood like this, we're just flooding on dual lands. We don't have, uh, you know, utility things to be drawing. Least we gained life against their blue white control deck. Right on schedule. Go tuck yourself, Tefri. Come on, Empire. Thanks for sticking around for two years. I appreciate it. Welcome back. 
go ahead and get all my can tripping done right now before they can drop a Narset on us. Darkness, my old friend. Oh, that. Do 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 I, do I even leave Selfless Savior in my deck? It's like, I guess they have Faithful Absence, but like, almost everything else was, uh, was Exile, right? Go. I got two for one my Saram with a march. You're right.
least there. Glass, glass half full. Um, I like put together a bunch of bits and pieces from around the internet lamp. They're just like not really in it. There isn't a card you can play that's resilient to exile removal. You're, you're right that Vanguard's like ain't what she used to be, but like at the same time, there isn't a replacement, right? Like there was, there was a more resilient two drop I could play, I'd play it, but yeah. definitely do not want to see a keyword that makes you immune to exile effects because then they'll just create some, some other way to get rid of things in this like fucked up arms race that is modern magic the gathering that absolutely freaking forever removed from the game zone Yeah, put on put on the bottom of library would be uh would be the the call. Yeah, un unfortunately, they had another removal spell here, so this like technically lets us live for a turn, but we just, we just don't have a catch up mechanic from here. All right, I don't I don't even want this deck. Um, I'm definitely not. I'm definitely less excited about Explorer since they banned Winota, but Historic really is just, I'm not, I'm not going to take any more Historic donation decks until this format gets a fundamental adjustment. I just, just and, and it's, it, it don't, don't take this personally if you're someone that enjoys Historic. This is just, this is just my opinion, man. But this, this format generates some of the worst games of Magic that I have played in a long time. Just like, in a post unholy heat arc mages charm format i just just don't like the type of gameplay this format generates on average it's just not fun for me and i get i get that other people are into that and i'm not going to yuck your yum but i'm do i'm done taking money to play historic that's not and the format the format needs a fundamental change for me to be able to enjoy it. It's not, it's not the format that I liked playing for a long time anymore. <laughs> 